Hashtag it's time to start class. Okay. All right. Linear systems. How many variables do you see? Okay. Um, hold on just a second. Okay, that's what I want. Okay. Uh, how many variables do you see in the system? Three. What are they? X, Y, and Z. Okay. What do you notice about the first equation? It has all three, X, Y, and Z. What do you notice about the second equation? It only has two. What do you, what do you notice about the last equation? Uh, any idea what we'll do first? What do you want to do with the last one? Oh, it's like actually solve it, right? Because there's only one variable, so we can solve that. If I divide both sides by three, X equals six. So in one step, I've already solved for one of my variables, right? So now what? Plug it into the second one? Okay. So 4x, oh, I mean 4 times 6 plus 6y equals 60. Okay. So 24 plus 6y equals 60. Subtract 24, 6y equals 36, excellent, y equals 6, huh, now what, put it in where, to the first one, why, because we need to find z, okay, so 4 times not x, but 6, plus 6 times 6, plus 5 times z equals 70. So 4 times 6 is 24, 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5z equals 70. What is 24 and 36? So 60 plus 5z equals 70. 5z equals 10, z equals 2. Am I done? Why not? We have to write our answer, and somebody said you have to put it into a point. I have three values. Is it still a point? Yes. What kind of point is it? in three-dimensional space. Very good. Okay, so six, six, two. Because x, y, z, they're in alphabetical order, one right after the other, right? Okay, any questions about that one? Anybody? Okay, then look at number two. What do you think we'll do with number two? Solve the last one, okay? So divide both sides by three. U equals four. U is four. Now that feels really weird to say, just so you know, because it feels like I should be saying U are four. But, now what? Plug it into the second one. So 3 times 4 plus 4v four equals 36. What's 3 times 4? So 12 plus 4v equals 36. So we're subtracting 12 from both sides. So 4v equals 24. So v equals 6. And now? Plug it into the first one. 4 times 4 plus 3 times 6 plus 2y equals 44. Does anybody have any idea what 4 times 4 is? Oh my gosh. 
So great. Three times six? Eighteen. What is sixteen and eighteen? Thirty-four plus two y equals forty-four. So if I subtract thirty-four from both sides, two y equals ten. So y equals five. And now we have a problem. Because in the language that I speak, which is most often English, U and V and Y are not three letters together. That would be logical to put them in order, like whatever alphabetical order they might happen to be, but we're going to do something different. Okay? X, Y, and Z are traditionally the um, axes that we know, right? In three dimensional space, not U and V and Y. Okay? So if we were graphing this in three dimensional space, we would have to completely rename all of our axes. So what we're going to do is this. Okay. Now, is this the only way to do it? No. You're doing it for me this way because I asked you to. Okay. This, to most students, is very logical. X, Y, Z. We're normally used to the X and Y axis. Remember I explained to you last week about the Z axis. Right? That's logical. U, V, Y doesn't make sense. I don't want to confuse you, okay? When it's three letters all in a row, like ABC, something to that effect, we're going to put it just like this as a point, okay? When it's three random letters, we're going to list each one of the points just like this. Please understand, when you get to college and you're taking college algebra, which you all are going to, right? Uh, they may ask you to do it a different way, okay? And when they ask you to do it a different way, you'll say, yes, ma'am. Or if, if your professor is a man, don't say that. Say, yes, sir. Okay? Any questions about that? How comfortable are you feeling with uh, systems of equations with three variables when you're given a system like this? Are we good? Turn it over. Look at number nine. How is this different? There's still three variables, right? Is one of the variables easily solved for? No. So let me ask you this question. Would you know how to do the problem if it was that? So is it okay if I just conveniently ignore one of the equations for a minute? In fact, that's the best idea, right? Let's just ignore that pencil, or that equation that my pencil is covering for a minute. How would you solve that system if that's all that was there? You would either do elimination or combinations probably, right? And since we have a variable with a multiplier of one, maybe I could multiply that whole equation by negative two. And if I did that, I'd get the first equation, and I'd get the second equation multiplied by negative 2, which would be negative 2a minus 6x equals negative 34, right? Does that make sense? And could I solve it from there? How? Combine them to eliminate a variable, math assassins. 2a and a negative 2a, 0. 2x and a negative 6x, negative 4x. 18 and a negative 34. What did I do? 
17 times negative 2? Okay. That's okay. This one's 18, this one's 17. 18 and negative 34? Negative 16, right? So if negative 4x equals negative 16, what does x equal? x equals 4. Now what do I do? You keep saying that. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by plug it in? Give me a destination. Plug it into the middle equation? Why? Well, if I plug x into the middle equation, won't that help me solve for a? Could I plug x into the top equation? Then tell me why you chose the middle equation. One less step, there's no multiplier on a. Will it work if I plug it into the top equation? Absolutely, okay? But I'm going to go with what you said, and what you said was to plug it into the second equation. So a plus 3 times 4 equals 17 a plus 12 equals 17, a equals 5. Now what? Plug my a into the top one. That'll help me solve for x, except I already have it. So if I plug x and a into the bottom one, that will help me find z. All right, let's do it. 2 times a, which is 5, plus 3 times x, which is 4, plus z equals 20. So 10 plus 12 plus z equals 20. 10 and 12 is 22, plus z equals 20. If I subtract 22 on both sides, z equals negative 2. Now what? Are they consecutive letters in the alphabet? Then how are we going to write our answer? a equals 5, x equals 4, z equals negative 2. Guys, where am I writing the answers? Where did I write the answers every time? Over in the, like in the margin, if there was such a line over here, right? Over here where I haven't done any other writing except write the answer. Why do we do, why do I want you to do that? It's easy to find, okay? That's why we box them too, box them, or put them in the parentheses, right? Because they're easy to find that way, all right? trying to help you with your organizational skills because there's a lot of writing that has to go on to solve each of these, isn't there? Okay? Uh, 1 through 13 is what I'm going to check when you come to class tomorrow. However, I've already done 1, 2, and 9, so all you have left to do is 10 problems. I'd like to give you the rest of the period to do that. Does anybody have a problem with that? If you do, go ahead and get over it and work on the problems. Okay?